Go ahead. Welcome to part four of SCB Presents Women in the Field. Tonight's guest is Lori Wade. Lori's a field investigator with the BFRO. She's also a member of the East Tennessee Bigfoot and East Coast Expeditions. Lori has traveled around the U.S. and British Columbia researching Sasquatch, but most of her time is spent in Tennessee and North Georgia. She runs three to four expeditions for the BFRO every year and numerous private trips. Lori attends festivals and she has an Etsy shop named Bigfoot and Me. Welcome to the podcast, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Lori. Welcome, Lori. Hello. Um, so, to get this started here, um, I am good, good friends, I think, as far as Bigfoot community is concerned, as well uh, with Lori. And um, I first met her in 2019 on my very first field expedition hunting Bigfoot. Uh, but what I'd really like to know as far as women in the field is how, what was your first experience that got you started in this uh, journey, if you will, as far as Bigfoot hunting? Um, probably my first BFRO expedition. Um, I went to Kentucky in 2013 and was really, you know, sitting in my tent waiting on everything to happen. And I kind of thought, God, what if I'm here with a bunch of crazy people? Because I, you know, I didn't know anybody. And I had thought, man, I've traveled all this way and I, I don't camp by myself and I don't do this. And, you know, I even called my husband and said, you know, what if I'm here with a bunch of crazy people? And he said, you should just come home right now. And I said, no, we spent money on this. You know, I got to stay. Um, so when it started, took me about an hour and it was hook, line and sinker. I couldn't believe I was with all these great people that had the same beliefs I had and the same excitement and nobody was calling you crazy or rolling their eyes or anything. So that was, that was really what got me started because after that one, I mean, as soon as I got home from that weekend, I contacted BFRO and signed up for the next one I could get to, which was happened to be a North Georgia one. Um, and then, okay. you know, it's history from there. I just kept on doing it and doing it until uh, they made me into an investigator. And then I thought I can do these expeditions. And I started doing that. Um, go ahead, Angie. No, I just said that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And so. Uh, hang on. I got a question, though. No. So, uh, Lori, so you went from being um, someone that was just. A couch potato. <laughs> but, and, and, and yeah, yeah. So, um, an enthusiast, right? And you I sign up. An enthusiast. Uh, I mean, somebody that was just kind of casually interested in Bigfoot. Casually interested. Okay. Now, uh, was this because it, maybe you, you had seen it on TV, like the TV, the old show, the uh, Finding Bigfoot, or? Well, there's a funny story. I, I'd always liked Bigfoot. Okay. And um, my daughter had called me one night and said, mom, there's a show on TV that you're going to love. It's called finding Bigfoot. So I flipped over and then I was like, Oh my gosh, people actually do this. They go hunting. So I signed up for the first one and I told my mother, God rest her soul. But I told my mother, I said, mom, you're never going to believe what I'm going to do. And she said, what? And I said, I'm going to hunt for Bigfoot. I'm going to go do this stuff. And she, <laughs> said, she said, Oh, I'm not surprised. I'm like, why are you not surprised? And she said, well, you don't remember? You know, and immediately I'm like, don't remember what? And she said, you used to get down on your hands and knees and pray at night. Please, God, don't let the Bigfoots get me. Oh. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, Mom, what happened to me that you're not telling me about? And she said, I have no idea where you got that from. So researching and from the time frame that she said I was doing this, <laughs> It was way prior to the six million dollar man Bigfoot episodes. Oh, so we in won't search tell of, in search of it. Prior to yeah. that. Okay. So, but so obviously, I mean, I still think something must have happened. We had woods behind our house. I don't know yeah. if I ever saw something or what, but something made me interested. And in why? Why would a six year old be praying? Don't let the Bigfoots get them. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. That was one so of my you went questions. From, Did you ever figure that out? No, I still don't. And my mom's past. I mean, she said that she doesn't know of anything that's happened. But I mean, we camped all the time as kids, and, mm. and with my parents. And right. I don't know. 
I don't know if something happened or not. So I have no, maybe okay. I should get oh, funny story. Yeah, huh? Yeah, maybe um, somebody should hypnotize uh, me. Funny and story. Me. Yeah. There you maybe go. I'm there you go. Shit, but I don't know. Huh. So I can't answer well, it. I don't know. I told but Angie I here recently. I was I was in hook, line, and sinker. Okay. Okay. So the very first uh, expedition you said was in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Then you were um, uh, did a North Georgia one. I was I, I was I was writing notes here. Yeah. And then and then uh, soon after you worked your way up to be a uh, investigator. Yeah, I've probably went on about thirty expeditions with the BFRO. So and you had to get you had to do thirty, and then and then they they brought oh, you no, in. Oh no, no, I didn't have to do thirty. I just say that that's how many I've been on because oh, okay. I, could, I couldn't get enough. I wanted to keep going out and and doing okay. things. And then you know, uh, a private group and and myself actually it was me and four of my guy friends all went to British Columbia for ten days. I'm in mm -hmm. the middle of nowhere, and my husband to this day says. Who lets their wife go with four guys, you know, into <laughs> British Columbia? And I'm like, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It was fun. laughs> yeah. Into the wilderness. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I think I'm up to about leading. Um, I think I'm on 26 now that I've I've led for the BFRO. Wow. As okay. I'm COVID year, I did four. Wow. And you know. That was a crazy year to get permits and stuff, but I, I did four expeditions and we had a great turnout. I mean, everybody wanted to get out in the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a. I know, like as far as like the outdoor world and industry, uh, COVID was a big boom for that industry. <laughs> you know, just go. Uh, you know, kayaks were being you know, sold. You know, uh, oh, yeah, tents. I and, wish and, I had and whatnot. had some invested in camping equipment that year. Yeah, yeah. So one of our shows, a big sponsor is you know Bass Pro Shops. You know what? And and uh, that was one of the th big things. They couldn't keep uh, a lot of things in, in stock just because, man. You know, the people were getting back in the outdoors. It was good. You know, yeah. same thing for a lot of outdoor sports and stuff. But uh, so twenty plus, almost thirty outings now. Um, mm -hmm. Have you had? You know, everyone's gonna know. Everyone wants to know. Have you had the? You know the oh wow, there's one. I see Absolutely, one. I I have seen two within sixty yards that I have zero doubt what I was looking at. Really, once in 2016 and wow. once in 2018, and right. you know both times I'm looking at it going, I know I'm out here doing this, but is that really what I think it is? And it, was Scott it was there? Really, Scott no. was not there, but Scott okay. and I have been on some things that <laughs> that we can't explain. I mean, yeah. you know. You can't yeah. always explain what lights are in the woods, or you can't always explain what that sound was. Yeah, I can't say it was a Bigfoot. I can't say it wasn't a Bigfoot. Yeah, I can say yeah. the two things I saw absolutely were not a person, was not a bear, was not somebody in a suit. I know what I saw. I I think that's important uh, to to mention that you you are one hundred percent confident in what you saw was was it was was a Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Yes. You know, I, I was, I, I was in the same boat, you know, you, you, uh, before we came on, you know, uh, recording. And I was with you. You know, pretty much right, yeah, right down yeah. the path. Yeah. We, you know, you, that, you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter who believes you. Because nope. it's, not a matter, it's not a matter of trying to convince someone. What yeah. matters is what's in your heart and what's in your, your head right. that you know you saw. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not going to matter if every person in the world tells me you didn't see that. Well, you weren't there. You don't know what I saw. And I yeah. did see something that supposedly does not exist. Yeah. Now, you know, what's weird is, you know, uh, my first my first sighting, you know, um, uh, was on a mil you know, on a military fire range, you know, and I was using a big, big loophole spotting scope. And then we were looking down range while we had some. um um, shooters, um, firing their rifles. Right. And, uh, you know, so this, you know, this Bigfoot that I saw the first time, you know, it, it was beyond 1200 yards, but you know what, through, through a powerful spotting scope, I mean, he looks like he's, you know, 20 yards in front of you. Right. Um, and 
I wasn't alone in seeing it, you know, so there was a range safety officer there, you know, there with, you know, and, and he was on glass as well. And so he ultimately the range operations falls on him. Right. Um, so he's the one that calls ceasefire, you know, when to shoot, when to stop. And so anyways, when he saw what I saw, <laughs> because I pointed it out, you know, uh, we, you know, they, they, they cease firing and whatnot. And, you know, you know, for several years, you know, the first time I, you know, reached out to Johnny Two Bears, you know, um, and, and talked to him was just because, okay, at that distance, you know, I couldn't, what, what, you know, I wasn't a hundred percent because, you know, I, I wasn't making out every little, every hair follicle, right. You know, I saw a, you know, a hairy bipedal tall thing walking, you know, um, but then when Scott, Johnny and I, and this was uh, last spring, you know, mm -hmm. uh, shortly after, uh, uh, April, right. Scott, when we were out there and, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, out of the happy place now, now I see one Yeah, and I always tell, you know, to my military friends or, you know, people, and it was like danger close. It, it was within 60 meters. Right. I mean, it was, it was close enough. I, <laughs> you know, I, I could have thrown a rock at it, you know, and, but when it was that close, there was no doubt. Okay. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. And, uh, um, I, yeah, I was amazed. I was amazed that, uh, one, it, it could be that close Two, it, it, it made oh. zero noise traversing the, the brush and the woods. Right. Um, you know, and, and you know, we, you know, those who've gone deer hunting and whatnot, I mean, a squirrel sounds like a, you know, like a moose, a moose coming through the woods. Right. But this thing was just moving. Like I, I, I tell people, it's like, you know, it was almost like it was gliding. You know, it didn't have that typical like bobbing. You know, it was just a very small, very smooth walk. Well, you, and, hear, uh, you hear two kinds well, of reports. You hear people say gliding and then yeah. you hear people say the bobbing. Well, there was so no I bobbing. Don't know, I yeah. Don't know if mm -hmm. Yeah. Things or what. Yeah. So, so you did, so it, it is kind of refreshing that you, you know, all, you, you went from, you, you, you said this at first, you went from being couch potato, all of a sudden you woods, and now you've had two encounters, right? right. That's, uh, I mean, that's incredible. So can I ask like what state or is that kind of like, uh, yeah. oh, no, I, I mean, I can't tell you exact location, but I can tell you what state the first one was in Kentucky in 2016. Okay. And I was actually with two other people, but, I turned around on the trail and started looking where we came from and they were faced opposite ways. So they didn't see it, but they did hear all the commotion. They saw the trees shaking, all the acorns falling. They heard the coyotes going crazy. They knew something happened. We audio recorded all of that. So oh, wow. I didn't make it up. I mean, you, they knew something was going on. Um, and in 2018, five of us were on a trail and actually three of us, we're probably separated by 75 or 100 yards, and three of us on all different locations. We weren't right beside each other. All came together at the same time. Was like, did you just see? And it wow. had it walked down. It was walking down a hill to a tree and going behind the trees. And um, the remainder of that night, we got pretty much escorted out. But I will tell you something about that night, which again, whether anybody believes me or. <laughs> stickers or says you know she's crazy i don't care i, I don't care um when we continued walking down that trail after we had investigated the spot and trying to do things we got to a point i wasn't scared i was excited i was you know ready to go on but we got to a point and i just stopped cold and they were like what's wrong and i said something's talking to me in my head and of course you know they probably made some remarks about people talking in my head but they said, what do you mean? I said, something is telling me, please stop. Please go away. That is what I heard. And they're like, what do you mean you hear that? I said, I don't know. I just hear, please stop. Please go away. So if Bigfoots have these telepathic mind speaking abilities, I don't know. But that's what I heard. And I told the guys I were with, I said, <clears throat> y'all can continue on. I'm not going a step further. We've invaded their home. And they were like, wow. okay, you know, if you believe that and you really feel that we're going to listen to you. And I said, I'm just telling you, I'm not going any further than what we've been. What we've been. And I really felt like 
I felt like they were communicating to me, look, you've seen us. Please, why are you here? You know, go away. Yeah. We're doing nothing to you. That's how I felt. And I still feel that to this day. Wow. I don't think they're, um, right. I don't think they ever intend to hurt you. I think when they get aggressive, it's for a reason. Wow. wow. Was, was that the only time you've experienced mind speak was at that time or have you experienced that? I, I have experienced it once more since then. And I've experienced some things that again, people don't believe. Um, and I don't even know if that, that was Bigfoot related. I, I tend to have a belief and, and maybe the BFRO wouldn't like me to say this, you know, but this is me as an individual talking. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not here representing BFRO. Gotcha. I'm Lori Wade, the yes. individual. I think that once you've opened up your mind to believing the impossible, things start to happen and you are, you are more in tune with the things going around you yep. and going around you. And in, in, I, I think Bigfoots are probably around us a whole lot more than what we actually know. So you yeah. just kind of have to have an open mind and just, even when it sounds like it's crazy, you know, something crazy happening, I can't, ex I can't always explain it, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, given that statement, Lori. Um, given that statement, what what are some of the other things that have happened or you've experienced um, uh, with 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 what you're talking about? Well, I, I've been zapped on multiple uh, occasions. Multiple, never. Uh, the first time I was zapped was in Wisconsin in 2015, maybe. And we were on a lake in a canoe checking out some, a report that somebody had had. And um, we went all the way around the lake. You know, this is a little lake that no power boats. There's no houses. It's just a just a small lake. Wisconsin has a lot of them. And when we come back to the area that we think we've parked our truck up this hill. Um, we are kind of not familiar with the cove. It's like, okay, this isn't right. And we could hear something in the woods, couldn't see anything, but we could hear movement. And we just thought, okay, deer, whatever. And then we finally found our cove and our light that we had left on in the back of the truck was not on. And I'm like, I know this is it. You know, I, I can see in the moonlight, I can see the truck up there. But as soon as I got off the boat, I heard a loud stomp that sounded just like somebody jumping out of a tree. I mean, that's what it sounded like. Just boom. And I turned and I asked my friend, I'm like, did you hear that? And he's like, yeah. And I said, was that a bear or a deer stomp? And he's like, no. You know, and he's a hunter. He's been a hunter all over the world his whole life. Um, and it wasn't very long after that, that something just grabbed, not physically grabbed hold, but grabbed hold of, of me and I started shaking. I couldn't breathe and I wasn't having a panic attack, but I was just morbid dread of whatever was happening. Um, this went on for a long time and my friend Mike was shaking me. He, I mean, he had been on the trail with me so many times, but he's shaking me going, Lori, what's wrong? Lori, what's wrong? Can you move? Can you move? And I'm like, no. I that can't. big Mike, that big Mike was with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I trust big Mike with my life. So, you know, he starts kind of trying to talk in Sierra sounds because he, he, he's like me. He said, I hair on the back of my neck standing up. So this goes on, this goes on and I'm crying and I, and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh. And he said, Lori, let's just leave the canoe. We'll just walk up the trail. We'll come back and get the canoe tomorrow. And I said, Mike, we'll never make it up the trail. He said, what do you mean? I said, we'll never make it. And he said, you feel that we're going to be hurt? And I said, we're not going to make it. So we kept talking. He kept talking. And finally, we heard behind the truck. And the truck was probably 75 yards up the hill, 100 yards. And we hear a whoop. And then we hear through the leaves up the hill. And then everything subsided. And I didn't have any more issues. So I think, I personally think that that was a 
a juvenile. And that was mom or daddy squatch calling it. And I think they zapped me because I was really close to the wood line to where that was at. Yeah, that's one thing. I've been zapped on other occasions where it just took me to my knees and, and don't know what. Um, right. One of the most crazy things, Scott, that happened, and I think you were there. Um, mm. That Christmas, wasn't it? That Christmas little trip we took. Were you there? When, um, when was it? Which one? The Christmas trip a couple of years ago. No, I went on the Christmas trip. Okay. So I, I always like to do something the week between Christmas and New Year's. There's typically not a lot of people in the woods. And, you know, I just kind of like to go. And we were on a trip and um, it had not been very active. But the last night it became a big storm and a lot of people left. They were just like, OK, this is our last night. It's pouring rain. We're not we want to stay. We're going to go home. But on the last night after the rain stopped, we all, you know, we all went out and there wasn't a very many of us, but I said, uh, I'm going out to X location. And they're like, you've went out there the last three nights. Nothing's happened. I said, I know, but I got a good feeling. I just, I feel something out there. And to make a long story short, we, you know, we had all sorts of whoops and howls and wood knocks and return wood knocks and all sorts of things like that. And I ended up walking up the road in front. We were on a dirt road and I ended up walking up the road in front of the group. And I literally walked into an invisible wall. Like one of the guys behind me was therming and he said it was like I bounced, like I'd hit a glass door, you know, when you don't know the door is closed. And mm -hmm. he saw me bounce off and he said, and he kind of laughed. He said, Lori, what are you doing? Cause he thought I was just acting crazy. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I hit something. And I'm in the middle of the road. I didn't, there was nothing there. Um, they walked up. We didn't feel anything. And I'm like, that, this is crazy. I don't, I don't know what happened. So again, we're, we're therming. We're trying to do all this stuff. And you know, we hear movement. We, we're doing a wood knot. We get a wood knot back. We're kind of trying to figure out, hey, are there people in the woods here that, that are messing with us? Mm -hmm. And um, I look up the hill on the road it's it's a, a hill and there's a um the moonlight's coming through and i see something cross the road and i look at the guy beside me and he's like do you see that i'm like yeah i did i don't know what it was but i, I can't tell i couldn't tell from that distance if it was upright or if it was a deer I, we just saw something cross the road mm -hmm. So there was another gentleman that I had just met on this expedition. I did not know him. He's to my right. Um, I, I want to say he's from New York or Vermont or somewhere, but I'm staring at that spot for a long time. And all of a sudden I have my phone in my hand. I have my cap on. I have my red headlamp on. Something hits me. A force hits me, knocks my cap off my headlamp. My phone goes flying. I am up in the air and I land on my back on the dirt road knocked me out for just a second and uh you know they were kind of worried they were like did she have a stroke what happened you know what happened you know what happened to lori did she trip and the guy next to me who like i said i'm not friends with don't know him from adam he said she just got clotheslined and she wasn't moving something knocked me down now i will tell you that i don't really believe that was bigfoot i don't know what it was though I mean, was it paranormal? I don't know. I can't explain it. And I've went there several times to the exact same location. And, you know, I don't feel anything. I don't see any signs of anything. But something happened that I will never be able to explain. And I have talked to several prominent, popular Bigfoot researchers. Um, and there a few of them have said, okay, I've heard something like that. And some of them have said, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen anything like that. Wow. So that was. What that. did it feel like? What did it feel like when it hit you? Did it feel like a a wall hit you, or did it feel it, like it a? It felt like um, like a sonic force. I mean, it felt like just a, a a invisible force hit me and knocked me down. I mean, my phone slung thirty feet behind me. I mean, it knocked me down. Had a big knot on the back of my head. You know, I was like, okay, I don't know what happened here. Like like a punch or like someone hitting you with no. a board? Or 
No, not not uh, like that. Like just a a full force hit me in the head, just like a burst of energy. Oh, okay. Tell me that doesn't sound crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it I know it does. I know that it sounds crazy. It, so, no, it, it no, does. it don't. It don't sound crazy to me. <laughs> and uh, you um. You didn't get like a bruise, bruising or anything like uh, that? No, just, just, no, just, you know, I had a knot on the back of my head because literally, literally it picked me up off my feet. I mean, oh. I didn't just, I didn't stumble. If I'd have stumbled, I'd have said, you know what? I was, you know, I tripped over my own feet. I was standing still staring at that spot where I had saw something cross the road. And I, I just kept thinking, whatever that was, I hope it walks back. I'm just, I'm going to really zoom in on that with my eyes. And and that's what it happened. I mean, I was standing. There were uh, one, two, three. There were four of us. So I was standing there, and I was standing right beside one guy. Another guy was kind of diagonal to me, maybe I don't know, fifteen feet in front of me. And then another guy was four feet to my left, and nothing happened to them. It was like it, whatever that particular issue was, that was directed at me. And I, I won't use the language that I used then, but I said. <laughs> You know, when I hit the wall, it was telling me back off. And then when it knocked me down, it was like, look, I warned you. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. again, I can't tell you that that was a big foot, but I did take that as a warning of we tried to tell you earlier to back off and go away. Um, so, wow. Yeah. And you, that'll be that's firstly you could tell people right now when you go Bigfooting. If you do it long enough, you're going to cross cross lines with other stuff occasionally. You are. Th th that might have been something. I mean, look, y'all. I mean, Scott, you know, I tell, I say this on, <laughs> I probably shouldn't admit this. I say this on BFRO Expeditions. I'm not here to tell anybody what you should believe. I'm not here to say that it is this type of creature. You do your own research and you believe what you believe. Nobody can tell you what you see, what happens to you. I mean, nobody can tell me that something did not knock me down. I did not fall down on my own. I did not pass mm -hmm. out. I wasn't drinking. I mean, you know, none of those things happened. Whatever happened, how could something, how could my hat and my headlamp fly off my head before I hit the ground? You know, if, you, if I had fallen, that stuff would have hit the ground and fell off. No, that stuff mm -hmm. came off prior to me, um, prior to me ever falling backwards. And when I say falling backwards, it wasn't just falling. I saw my feet in the air. And it was just like, bam. Wow. So I don't know what that was. I, I don't know that I will put that in the Bigfoot field, but maybe, maybe paranormal. I don't know. Wow. So, so Lori, um, you know, kind of going back with your story now, I mean, obviously now, now you're out there doing investigation, researching, um, and whatnot. Uh, does your family come with you? Uh, okay. No. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 no I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, I see the photos on, uh, back there on the wall. So I didn't uh, know. Those are, those are my, those are my children. Um, okay. Do they go uh, along no they? uh my my oldest son has started occasionally going to these festivals with me to help me and okay. he's like you know i don't know if they exist my daughter thinks that i've absolutely lost my mind uh -huh. and uh my youngest son who passed away in 2019 um Sorry. from a drug, drug overdose he was the only one that ever went squatching with me okay. so sometimes Sometimes when I go off by myself, which I, I don't ever recommend people do that, but even yeah. if you're on a trail with somebody and you walk ahead, sometimes I talk to my youngest son and I'm like, you know, Tanner, you take care of mama out here. You know, if, if something's. Yeah. Oh, that's good. very sweet. And, and I feel like he does. I feel like he protects me. I, I'm going to hawk my business here just a little bit. So on my big foot and me Etsy shop that I do all these festivals with, mm -hmm. I make this, I make these um, stuffed animal big foots and all different sizes, but I make one with a heart on it and wow. I call it Tanner's squat. Oh, um, sometimes I say Tanner's probably in heaven going, really, mom, you named a <laughs> Bigfoot after me. All my granddaughters have them. 
all the money from that I make from that, yep. I send to different drug rehab programs every month. Oh, so, that's wonderful. Um, it's no, the only is. thing I can do at this point. You know, I can't, I can't help him, but by goodness, I can help somebody else. That's right. So, that's well, yeah, yeah, my, my house is actually Bigfoot motif, but that's the one wall that's not. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have Bigfoot all over the place. It's like, uh -huh. If you could see them, they're everywhere. Everywhere. Lori, wow. how did you choose the locations that you, um, you know, did the ex expeditions at? Well, you know, I choose them based on places that I go that I think have the, the right atmosphere. I choose them by a lot of listening to a lot of people talk. Not everybody's going to give a report that they want posted or mm -hmm. that they want out there. Yeah. Um, especially older folks, they don't want people making fun of them. Um, so you listen to a lot of the community and when people talk about having strange things happen and, um, you, and, and that's where you go and you zero in on, on those mm -hmm. type of locations. I mean, I happen to think Bigfoots can be anywhere, you know, I, as yeah. long as they've got water and food and, and gosh, we know they travel. I'm not saying mm -hmm. they go to Florida for the, you know, for the winter, mm -hmm. but they don't stay in a two mile radius. They have to wander yeah. a little bit. They can't, you know, they would, their resources would be gone. Yeah. But I, I do believe they have what I think is a home base. And then they travel around that home base and they have, I do, I personally believe they do have the Sentinels and the Hunters and they have a family unit. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think that you, you have to pay attention to those things. I mean, if you find a track somewhere, if you're lucky enough to find a track somewhere, I promise you there's going to be a Bigfoot family somewhere within, you know, whatever radius of miles that you happen to believe it is. Maybe they're not going to be there that day that you're there or that four days that you're on an expedition. Maybe you might not see more than a stick structure. Maybe you don't even hear any howls or, or wood knocks. That doesn't mean that they're not there. It just means mm -hmm. that they're not interacting with you. Gotcha. Well, that, that brings me to a question. Um, of all of the experience that you had through you know, out the years of doing this, I bet you Barbara got the same question. Maybe who who's who do you think is the most influential person that or person that you think the highly of that you've come across, that you've learned from or or met? doing all of this oh goodness hmm. no i know you know all the, the finding bigfoot folks you know you know you know all the invest you know all the investigators from all around the states you know a lot of big time hunters scientists you've met i mean you I, know i mean i have and i mean i wouldn't say that i'm great friends with those people but i mean you know i Every time I see Cliff, we have a conversation. I mean, you know, I, I could I could email Cliff and he would respond to me. I mean, Matt, um, Matt actually has a lot of knowledge. Um, you talking about Matt Moneymaker, right? Yeah. For those I mean, who for those for those knowledge. who don't know, yeah. Yeah, he ha he does have a lot of knowledge. Most influential. Well, I'm going to tell you that one of the best people I know in the woods, Scott, you know him, and you know his personality is Jeff Carpenter. Yeah. Jeff is amazing at detail in the woods. And he he'll tell you right away. Yep. It's like, you know, yep. that's a bear track, that's a deer track. No possums make that. He he knows the woods. So I have a lot of respect for Jeff Carpenter. Um I have a lot of respect for anybody that doesn't jump the gun and thinks everything, every sound they hears a Bigfoot. Um, I, I mean, I think you have to listen to everybody. You know, some, what are these people, uh, ghost hunters, paranormal people or whatever that they have that sixth sense or that whatever, maybe it's a, a blessing, maybe it's a curse or whatever, but they usually know and they talk to spirits or, or whatever. Um, I think you got to listen to people when they're in, you're in the woods with them. You know, you know the ones that are just scared, but then you also know the ones that maybe are really 
getting some kind of, and I call it, you know, my Bigfoot vibe or, you know, I get the EBGBs. If I get the EBGBs, I'm, you know, I'm looking around going, okay, what, what's making me uncomfortable? Is there a bear? You know, is there a bobcat over there in the grass or, or whatever? Um, I don't know. I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to get off this podcast and think, why didn't I say so-and-so? Because I, I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't come up with a name, but I mean, like the people that I like to go out with, um, maybe you're not people that are in the mainstream. It doesn't mean that they're any less qualified than somebody that's on a TV show. That doesn't make them qualified. I mean, to have investigator mm-hmm. beside your name doesn't make you qualified. Being open-minded to whatever the possibilities are, that makes you qualified. Dude, there's benefits to going out with people who have never done it before as opposed to going out with people who have done it a Absolutely. thousand times. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have to remind myself that sometimes that I forget the things that were exciting. You know, you hear a stick break. Okay, well, it could be anything. And they're all excited and scared. And, you know, we've kind of tuned that out because we're like, we either want to go big or go home. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're going for the big stuff. We want to see one. We want to hear one. We want to get a picture of one or whatever. And we forget to look for all the little things. Um, so, yeah, I love I love having a new person go out. I don't necessarily like having to babysit a new person. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Scott, you know, some of them are like, whoo. <laughs> but, you know, when I'm, I, I don't, wouldn't say that I try to sell an expedition. But I tell people all the time, it's like, do you like camping? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, do you like hiking? I mean, not necessarily a lot of hiking, but do you like walking in the woods? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, throw in looking for Bigfoot. What's the difference? <laughs> what is the difference? You're just doing something. The thing that I think scares people most is going out at night. Mm-hmm. And, then, and there is something a little weird about going out in the woods in the middle of the night. You know, it's not normal. <laughs> it's, it's not <laughs> normal. It makes us a little abnormal. So I don't know, Scott. I can't answer your question. I don't know of somebody that I just think, okay, I want to be like him. Uh, but I do. I just I do respect people that that will listen to you. And if something happened to you, I mean, I couldn't tell you if you saw something or not, Scott. I just because I didn't see it doesn't mean that you didn't see it. And I think that's real important for any Bigfoot researcher to yeah. be able to keep an open mind. And just because it may sound crazy to you, tuck it away in the back of your head because you something like that may happen to you. And you you think, oh, gosh, I thought that person was crazy. And here, here I go. It happened to me. I'll get you for that question later. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on spot. I don't know. I had one, uh, I had a podcast recently that somebody asked me about a particular person and they said, well, I think that person's a little bit crazy. What do you think? And I'm like, no, I'm not answering that question. You know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus just because it doesn't sound normal to me. Doesn't mean it's not normal. It's just mm-hmm. not my normal. That's right. Well, Lori, have you ever been like afraid? Have you ever had been scared when you were out there? You know, I think anybody, anybody can get scared in the woods at night. Just, you Mm -hmm. know, I mean, you can just maybe not be in tune and hear a stick break and jump. You know, Mm -hmm. you can get scared. Um, The the first time I got zapped, I mean, I I say that that was the only time that I was petrified. And I really, truly had just the most innate feeling of dread. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I literally thought, I'm never going home. I still don't think I had a panic attack. I still think I was zapped. And I think that was just how I was zapped for that. Because you hear people get zapped. Um, Maybe it's not so strong. Um, I was zapped in South Carolina last year. Yes, in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to my knees and I, I got nervous. But I knew what I did was wrong. I tried to approach the sound. I kept, I walked into the forest off trail and went down and I got too close. And I, you know, was I scared? 
I don't think scared, but you know, it really took me to my knees and I had to call somebody. I'm like, Hey, you need to come here. I, I can't get up. Um, I mean, is it pain that you feel? Is it nausea? No, is it dizzy? In the immobilization for me, just not being able to move. I mean, I know people who've had long term wow. effects, um, physical effects from getting zapped. Um, heat, I mean, uh, blood in their urine, headaches. I mean, all mm. sorts of things. coughing up blood, coughing up blood. Yes. Yeah. Different things. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't really think. Squatches mean to hurt you to the point of death, but I think it depends on you know, like people, there are bad squatches, and there's mostly good, but there's always going to be some crazy squatch. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I'm gonna uh, let me add something to what you were saying about South like, South yeah. Carolina. There was a trip before that one where someone has had been zapped. And it was yeah. a very, very bad experience for that person. And um, they they were upset for quite you know, a while. Right. You're right. And I was talking about the, the following year trip in a different location. But that mm -hmm. trip I was on, I was on with Scott and um, something had happened to me. I had gotten bluff charged the night before in the same exact location where this it person was, got. Yeah, it, was a night, it was a night. It was the night before I was with you. Was, yes, it was an odd four, and, and something happened right there. I don't know. I don't know if they were down in that valley, but um, yeah. this particular person got zapped, um, and not in a good way. I mean, it, it was it was pretty traumatic. She was very, very upset, and she was a vivacious young lady. I mean, full of life, full of spunk. You know, you couldn't have you couldn't have touched her. I mean, she she was great, and whatever happened, I don't know. I don't know what caused it. I mean, and Scott kind of understands what I'm talking about because it it was really came out of the, out of nowhere. Um, yeah. But it was it was kind of a harrowing situation. I've 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 never had somebody get zapped and holding on to me and crying and hugging my neck because they're so upset at what happened. You know, and then yeah. said that she, she was even saying, "Did I cause that? Did I cause that?" And I'm like, "No." You know, we don't know what happened, but you didn't cause it knowingly. Wow. So, so Scott, have you ever, you ever been zapped or? No, I, I have not been zapped. And um, I have a, a thought on that. I mean, you have to be maybe open to it or it's, it's maybe directional. It's intended to do something to a certain person because I think it's direction. I, I mean, you can uh, be standing beside somebody and they don't get it. That's right. So, and I was that person that she was talking about. I was present with when the whole transition and zap occurred. Right. And I she, came in just she, afterwards. she went from what we all knew to a completely different person to a basket case of upset and emotion. Wow. And it all, all happened and it all happened prior to another girl who left at that spot 20 minutes, 15 minutes prior. Um, it was occurring with that person, but that person was left and went out of the environment and then it hit her. And then that's when, and then Lori came up later and, and I, yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I, I right it, as she was upset and I'm like, what's going on? And you're like, Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But it, it, it's a whole, a whole story of what happened just that night, and then adding what happened the night before with the bluff charge and all of that. Um, in the very, very exact same spot, same tree line. It's right. crazy. So I don't carry. I, I don't carry. I'm not saying that people shouldn't. I don't want keep people carrying when they're around me because I don't know. I don't trust the people. You know, I don't trust somebody on a trail with me to not get scared and accidentally shoot because, you know, I was overtaking a pee in the woods. You know, just like, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't want to be scary. But um, that night before when I got bluff charged, I literally asked the guy, I, I jumped back and said, you, it was you. I said, do you have your gun? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I want to know, Scott, do you have your gun? Because it scared me. 
it scared me to the point that I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, something's about to to go down here. Um, and I, and I, I wanted to make sure Scott had his gun. I mean, and, I and it was out. <laughs> it was but there. You know, right I've there. been in the woods hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. And mm-hmm. only a few times have I been scared. Um, I, you know, the after I got zapped in Wisconsin in 2015, the next time I went camping was about three months later. And I couldn't sleep in my tent. And I, again, I was with a bunch of guys. I should have felt safe, but I mean, I came out of my tent and I said, guys, I can't do this. And they're like, what do you mean you can't do this? I said, I'm, I, I, everything I hear, I'm scared. And it was kind of funny because one of them had this big machete knife and they're like, here, Lori, sleep with this. And I was fine. Once I had that big knife, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm good. But it took me that long to start feeling comfortable and thinking, okay, there's all sorts of sounds in the woods. I had a girl one time who, who absolutely just got irate and started crying because it, it was a barred owl and it was kind of following us down the trail. And she's like, I've worked in zoos. This is not a human. This is not an owl. This is, I know what owls are. I'm like, I promise you, it's a barred owl. And I literally had to get back to camp and have her listen to the same sounds that we heard. And she's like, I had no idea. But she was determined that it was something, you know, she psyched herself up Mm -hmm. into thinking something uh, way more than what it was. Wow. To to follow up what what Joe what you asked a little while ago that brought brought about this discussion about me and getting zapped, I know a number of people who have been zapped, and it's not just uh, isolated to women. No. I know I know more guys who have been zapped, and every one of them had different symptoms, um, at di- and at different times. Right. And so it it just depends on. You're where you're at, what's going on, and if that Bigfoot wants you to get zapped or not, and we'll, what they want to. I think it, it has to do with protection. I think yeah. it has to do with maybe in that particular instance that you're talking about, Scott, maybe there was family close by. Maybe there could were have, babies. Maybe could have been down there in that valley. valley. Yeah. Right. Maybe there was something that they're like, hey, these people are too close, too close to mine. You know, to my family. I mean, think about what we would do as parents to protect our children. Anything, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. So it happens. It's just not talked about a lot. But, I mean, here we are citing all the examples. And that's a good thing because it's something to pay attention to if you're out there with somebody and who you're with starts acting kind of odd. Maybe something's yeah. going on. Or you need to watch them. out. Yeah, you tell them. You know, if you feel anything, even if you're just feeling scared, talk to us about it. Tell me what's going on, because maybe something is happening to them, but not the rest of you. And you need to kind of zone in on where is this coming from? Is it coming from this direction or, or what? And, and, you know, I think the same thing about, you know, people say, oh, Bigfoot smell. I don't necessarily <laughs> believe that because I've been around. I, I've been around enough to where I never smelled anything bad. I think mm-hmm. that's just like a skunk. I think they have some kind of scent land that they can smell when they want to, you know. Yeah. I don't believe they just walk around stinky other than, you know, just normal animal hominid smell, you know. Yeah. Well, Barb, did you, Barb, I think Barb's having some uh, trouble. Barb, can you, can we hear you now? I can, now. Yeah, can y'all hear up. me now? Barb's got some, No. No, I, hear you now. I hear you, Barb. Go you ahead, can? Barb. Yeah. I can. Oh, yeah. well, hi, Lordy. Hi. <laughs> I was sitting here crying, but evidently I was not being able to. And I kept texting Angie. Angie, what's going on? Well, anyway, I'm not dead in here. Um, I just, for some reason, was unable. But um, I just thought you were a good I have just a couple of questions. Sure. Oh, well, I am a good listener, aren't I? Aren't I? Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I've got a question. A couple. (laughs) How did you get into taking and being it? How did I get into what? What was that? How did that come about? Taking the BFRO training. Um, Training to be. Okay, so I just started going to a lot of 
a lot of expeditions. And to be a BFRO investigator, yes, you can ask to be one, but to okay. be one, someone has to take notice of you and take notice of, right. hey, she's good in the woods, or I, I like the way that she goes about walking on trails or listening or whatever. And then somebody pretty much um, decides they want to sponsor you, so to speak. So like oh, cool. Scott's a BFRO right. investigator and yep. I, from Scott's right. police training, I yep. like, and I had been in the woods with Scott a few times and I thought, I, you know, this guy would make a good investigator. So I suggested him to the BFRO. Right. Um, and then you just kind of oh. keep going with each other and we kind of train each other. I mean, and, and honestly, right. It lacks a little bit, you know, we don't, there's, I, I wish we had classes for investigators to say, look, this is what you should look for. Right. And I'm well, actually kind of wondering, wondering if there was that. classes. There's not, but I, I recently just was telling my little group of investigators, which Scott is involved in. Mm -hmm. It's like, Hey y'all, we need to have some expeditions with just us and just, you know, practice casting, practice going out and looking for different kind of stick structures, practice going out and looking for tracking. I would love to take a tracking class myself. Um, you know, I know I knew a few tracks and I've got a little card that I keep in my backpack of tracks, but sometimes you come across, you know, different animal tracks that I don't know what they are, you know, and I'm like, what is this? Right. Those type of things I think everybody should have more knowledge of and and be better at because maybe if you knew i don't know that that possums eat tree bark or or whatever you know it would help you especially it would help those right. people who, who want to jump to the conclusion that if that tree bark is missing off that tree they think it's a bigfoot and i'm like do you realize that deer also eat bark off the tree and so do possums and you know it it's not right. it's not to demean the people who think that that's not what i want to do at all but if, you know, if I go out and find evidence or if I, if I go out and, and I want to present evidence to somebody, I don't ever want it to be like, well, you were ignorant because you didn't even bother to, to know what other animals do this. Or like the barred owl, you didn't even know all the sounds of a barred owl. You didn't go back and you didn't go back and research what else could make that sound. You know, don't, I don't ever want it to be hoaxy if that sounds you know you can't mm -hmm. just assume it's a big foot but be prepared to and, and we've done it we've done it scott where we've said oh this happened this happened that i think that was a big foot and then the next day come back and go you know honestly, i think, I think maybe that we might have switched them here you know i mean that's you know, exactly how i am yes you gotta after, be willing to do it and, and after not, i think about it for a while i'm like eh. I don't right. think that's what that was. Yeah. I mean, and it's yep. great to get mm -hmm. about it, but at the same time, you, you've got to be willing to um, be humble enough to say, okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. Y'all, you know, after y'all mm -hmm. walked away, I saw a deer. Right. You know, and not be afraid to tell yeah. that, look, I was wrong. I, I was wrong about my, my presumptions. Right. People, you know, I went in, I, I will. Oh yeah, yeah. I went into this in nineteen as in law enforcement, and I got Lori put me with some people uh, who have all kind of experience. John, John Eves and and uh, Glenn Williams, some of the people who took me under their wing as well and taught me. And but I, every they all had that knowledge. Even Lori had that knowledge. Uh, when they hear something, that they, they know right away. A lot of times whether what it is or what it's not and i'm always was always like debunk 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 what else could it be what else could it be it couldn't be that it couldn't be that <clears throat> and over time with experience you start to get like they get and then you then then you want to pass that information on yeah you know and that's what i try to do whenever i can to anybody so. I, mean, I, would, I would never call myself a good researcher. I, I just wouldn't. Mm -mm, me, I, either. Well, not you, but me either. <laughs> but no, I wouldn't call myself a good researcher. I, I think I'm a decent expedition host. I mean, I do. Am I a good researcher? No, I'm always trying to be better. But I, 
I am not afraid to go out in the woods. I'm not afraid to go scout new areas. I'm not afraid to, to do stuff. So in that aspect, yes, I am a good researcher because I'm not just sitting here reading about it on the internet. I'm actually get out there and boots on the ground. Um, so, you know, but I would never call myself good. a good researcher. And I don't know how many people really are good researchers. Yeah. Without, without being demeaning to somebody or, we can all be better. Well, I'll go say all, all the expeditions that Lori leads, and I've been with Charlie Raymond and a couple, you know, a couple other people, but um, there are times where uh, she has guest speakers or uh, ex experts in their field, say tree structures or casting or footprints that come in and they'll speak and talk about what they've learned and what they've seen. And they'll have examples and stuff. Uh, we've had uh, first aid right. in the field. We've had uh, casting class, but big, big Mike, give us a casting class um, where, where we actually got to, you know, make a cast, see, see, see some casts, see some good ones, bad ones, different ways to do them, that kind of thing. You know, so there are some classes that you could, you can put out there, you know, but formal with a certificate. I mean, I got a certificate for the field safe, uh, first aid to field, but I mean, um, it's, it's get that little class and then go out and, and, and do it, do it. It's yeah, the best way. Know, when we have a BFRO expedition, yeah. man, your time's limited you know, and you're trying to get so much in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I try to give people, I can't control what somebody charges, okay? I can't control that. But I try to give them their money's worth, if that if that makes sense, what I'm saying. I want them to walk away from an expedition, whether it's private one with me or through the BFR. I want them to walk away and say, wow, that was fun. I learned so, a lot. I made a lot of new friends. Gosh, I had a good time. So you just brought up, like, you can't help what someone charges. Like yeah, uh, I so, so I look. So I, so I, I look, can't. Yeah, so I looked. I was just looking at looking at this on my on my iPad, like for an expedition. It was like three hundred to five hundred dollars. It's typically uh, four hundred dollars. Four hundred, like four four twenty five, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll just so or whatever. Um, that's per person. Mm -hmm. And it, I was so so they go to a registration link and they go through a registration. Yep, yep, um, and then um, they're able. They go to, through an interview process with the expedition host. Okay. Um, and uh, you try to figure out if they're going to be a good fit. You know, okay. somebody that says, I, I don't know the first thing about putting up a tent and I don't want to walk in the woods. They might not be a good fit. You know, yeah. that might not be what they need or right. want to do. Yeah. Um, I, I had one gentleman years ago. Uh, he left after the first night. And it took me forever to get back in touch with him. He didn't tell anybody he was leaving. He just left. And he just, you know, he finally ended up telling me that wasn't for me. I got Man. scared. I didn't like it. It wasn't for me. It's like, okay, I, <laughs> I understand. Uh, yeah. And, but I yeah. try to tell everybody what it's about before they sign up, you know? Yeah. But see, I'm, you know, so I'm sitting I, here like, uh, you know, it says bring your own food and your coolers and so, and, and that's it. So, so really it, it, plan as if you're going camping plan as if you're going camping with some hiking trips or whatnot. And then, um, uh, obviously there's interaction with, with enth other enthusiasts, right? So that's like camaraderie, right? Right. Well, what um, you're paying you for is a, as a, you're paying for, uh, an experience. You're paying for experience. You're paying yeah. for someone to take you into places and teach you what they know. Um, Scott can tell you the way I like to run an expedition is I like to feed you so much that the bears and stuff are going to love to eat you. When, cause that's that's right. I'm big into food. I'm big into <laughs> taking care of people. Uh, a, a full investigator is a happy investigator. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> Right. Me and Barb know this. Yeah. That's right. That, there you go. Hey. So, you know, I like to treat people the way I would like to be treated. Uh-huh. 
Um, I can't promise you you're going to have Bigfoot activity, but I can promise mm. you that when you leave, you're, you're going to say, man, that was fun. I have no regrets doing that. I've made some great friends and I have learned stuff and I can interact. Now I have a whole new network of people that I can interact and bounce things off of. That's yeah. what I want you to get out of it. But make no mistake, when we go to those locations that Lori in, in investigates and looks for, those are areas that have a, a good probability of activity or have had activity. So there's a good chance you might experience or find something. I mean, I was involved with a, a, in a thing in Ohio last night, fall, um, and literally there, there was this little section that they were going to be taking night hikes. And I actually had somebody ask me, they're like, well, how far do we have to walk before we're going to see them? And will they be on their right? And I mean, you know, you just kind of looked down and I thought, this isn't the Audubon Zoo. That's not what, you know, <laughs> that's not what's going to happen. But they literally in their head felt like that you just take them and be like, okay, look, if you'll just look over that hill, there they are. And um, we all know that <laughs> getting to see one is a privilege. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's also a rarity when you consider the amount of people that are in the woods. Think about the people on the AT. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of reports that don't come out because they just think, okay, I don't. it was probably a person. It was probably this, that, and yeah. the other. But think about how many people are on the Appalachian Trail that have probably seen something or heard something that they didn't probably. know what it was. Yeah. You know, and, and Scott can tell you, and I guess you probably can tell from my personality. I, if it comes in my head, it comes out of my mouth before I can stop it. You know, I, no filter. Yeah, yeah. I, that's I, why I get along with uh, Angie so well. You know, it's kind of say. That's crazy. <laughs> 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 I tell you, I got that Angie and I get along so well. Oh. The thing like that. That's yeah. right. That's right. There you go. Well, one thing I've learned is hiking and walking in the woods are two different things. Yes, they I'll are. Tell you what, <laughs> it is yep. exhausting. I, I I actually did some hiking in Kentucky this past weekend, and my left calf hurts so bad right now that I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, but walking in the woods when we're you know just out researching in the field is more exhausting to me than hiking i mean i can yeah, i can hike trails but it's the you know the stepping over all the deadfall and avoiding the holes and i, I mean but i love it i absolutely love but, it but don't you agree that sometimes and and scott knows i like to do this sometimes you just have to go out there and sit yep. like, like a hunter and sit yeah. for a long time i am mm -hmm. not i bet you're not going to be able to guess this but i am not that person that goes out in the woods and it's like shh Let's listen. And I, I can tell you, I went out and walked with Lori. Lori has walked me to death. We walked so we walked so far on one trail in South Carolina one time. I didn't think we were coming back. I think we were. I thought I thought we were going to go on around the earth, come back around to the other direction. But uh, and then and then we stopped and sat down and had the best time ever in the middle of nowhere in the dark. Let me tell you, Sunday I walked so far that I thought. I wonder if I have phone signal and I could call a chopper to come get me because I do not want to bring me here that I can just sleep right here. That would be because I don't want to walk back. You know? I always try to tell people I was like, remember, well, I before think you walk in, we got to come back. So be careful about that. Yeah, um, that's true. And I think when you're out researching, Angie, and you get exhausted, it's because your mind and you're so anxious and you're so focused things that I mean really that mentally exhausts you physically well, I don't know I think it was just wearing those snake boots they're just heavier and all yes, that. Yeah. I mean my thighs were screaming <laughs> yeah I like my snake boots yeah I'm not going out well, without my snake boots yeah and you'd think as short as I am, I, I you know, <laughs> I wouldn't get that tired. But yeah, I do yeah. get tired. I do. It depends on the terrain you're on, too. If, you know, I if we're down in a, 
You know, if we're down Okie Finoki, it's flat. A lot of it's flat. But, uh, you yeah, know, we go to North Georgia or Tennessee, we're going up and down, up and down on the hills, you know. Down, up yeah, and down. Yeah, I need down. to get in shape. Yeah. I, I literally, Angie yeah. just said that on Sunday. I'm like, man, I didn't think I was this out of shape. But I was, I was doing a lot of, <laughs> you know, when somebody said, we have went 1,600 feet in the last 30 minutes. I'm like, what? You know, it's like, no wonder my... Butt hurts, you know, it's like mm-hmm. everything on my body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's very enjoyable just getting back that to nature. To yeah. Right. Well, Laura, we greatly appreciate you coming yeah. on the show tonight. Well, I appreciate it. Sharing I mean, your I hope, experiences. I, I hope that I've given you some kind of information, maybe something different than somebody else has. And uh, you absolutely have. Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe when people yeah. see this, they'll say, you know, I just want to go out there and do it. Yeah. Well, that that brings me to a question for you, Lori. Um, for women in the field, what would be, as somebody with your experience of doing this for a long time, what would be the one piece of advice you would give women out there? There's women in this field, but not as many as men, I would I would think. But what would be your one good piece of advice, if you had one, for women to get out there and do this, if they're going to? That we can do anything y'all can do. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't mean that in the ugly way. But women are a little bit more intuitive than mm-hmm. men are. Um, listen to what's going on around you. And, you know, and it's okay for a woman to say, hey, I'm afraid. But don't go out there and be crying, being a sissy baby. You know, maybe, maybe your role has to be something different in the investigation if that's who you are. But don't be afraid to go anywhere that, the, that men are willing to go. Go out there and do, and do your research, you know. I mean, I, like Bigfoot movies or Bigfoot books, I'll read some horrible ones, but I'll read them in hopes that something out of it will, you know, uh, stick in my head and I will be able to use that, um, you know, use that somewhere else down the road. Yeah, I will say one thing about being afraid. Um, I'm one of those that's scared, but every time I go, I get braver. Yeah, then don't do something stupid. Don't go out by yourself. And I tell, I even tell men that: yeah. do never, never go out by yourself. I'll tell you a brief, little, quick story. I used to go camping by myself all the time, and I'd be like, "Oh, I'm going to go Bigfoot, and I'm going to go do this," and then. Several, several years ago, I went out and I went to this place and I was beside this little creek and I set up my tent. I got my hot dog weenie out. I'm like, man, this is going to be great. Nobody didn't see a soul. Right before dark, this car pulled up way on the other side. It was like an old black hearse. Okay. Oh, great. Ugly looking guy got out. Oh, all he did is got oh. got his ear and sat behind his behind his hearse. And I thought, yeah, this isn't smart. And I packed my stuff and left because all of a sudden I just thought, you're just being foolish. You you don't have mm-hmm. a weapon out here. You're not being smart. And and as far as not going right. out by yourself, a woman. not necessarily Bigfoot. Yeah, there are people in the woods. You don't want those people. There, there are bad people in the woods sometimes. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you might accidentally right. walk up. In Kentucky, I walked up on an old steel one time, and I just said, hey, we need to turn around right now. Because I didn't oh, know geez. who might still be watching. <laughs> you know, you, you don't know. Um, but you know, go so if somebody gets hurt, you got somebody else to, to go get help. You know, mm-hmm. don't, don't ever go by yourself, no matter how much you want to. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, Lori, thank you, thank you so much, my my friend, for coming on here and You're and welcome. uh and God, talking I'm with us. I'm gonna walk your feet off this weekend, Scott. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you Friday. Be prepared. I'll see you on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lori, so very thank much. You so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank Bye. you, Lori. Thank, thank you, Lori. Very thank nice. You, thank, thank you, Lori. Bye. 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 Your meal was good.